In July 2022, Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahri was killed by a U.S. drone strike in Kabul, Afghanistan. No matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. The U.S. uses drones to kill alleged terrorists around the world with or without a declaration of war. Executions without trial. August the 29th, 2021. Original footage filmed from a U.S. combat drone circling over Kabul, scanning for terrorists. NATO forces are on heightened alert. Days earlier, an IS terrorist attack killed over 170 people at Kabul airport. Among them were 13 U.S. soldiers. Many of the victims were trying to leave the country after the Taliban takeover. But in other parts of the city, life was continuing as normal. It was a Sunday. We were outside on the street. The kids were playing. They were happy. There was going to be a wedding. We'd just done the shopping. Around 9 a.m., the U.S. military receives intelligence suggesting another imminent threat to the airport, involving a white sedan similar to the car driven by Zamarai Ahmadi. Surveillance cameras film him arriving at his job at 9.35. Ahmadi is an employee of a US aid organization that distributes food in Afghanistan. Hours later, surveillance camera footage shows Ahmadi filling water into canisters and loading them into his truck. He always brought clean water home in canisters because you can't drink the tap water here. That's what the canisters were for. But it's these canisters that make him suspicious to the US military. Around 4 p.m., Ahmadi leaves the aid agency's office. He has no idea that he's being tracked by a U.S. drone as he makes his way home. Just before 5 p.m., Ahmadi's car turns into his street. By now, U.S. military analysts have concluded that the car contains explosives and another attack is imminent. Ahmadi begins backing the car into the driveway. His children and his brother's children are waiting for him. The children were always excited when Zamarai came home. They liked him very much. They called him Grandpa. They'd yell, Grandpa is coming. They would all go outside. The kids thought the car was cool and they'd always get in it. That's what they did that day too. Die USA flogen heute nach eigenen Angaben in der afghanischen Hauptstadt einen Drohnenangriff. A drone strike against an ISIS -K vehicle. Ein Auto, das, so sagen sie, mit Sprengstoff beladen unterwegs war zum Flughafen. Die USA haben nach eigenen Angaben einen weiteren Anschlag auf den Kabuler Flughafen verhindert mit einem Drohnenangriff auf einen mutmaßlichen Selbstmordattentäter. The procedures were correctly followed and it was a righteous strike. In Kabul, the Taliban has given us permission to film. We're on our way to the home where the attack took place in August 2021 to meet a family member who witnessed what happened. Nazrat is the brother-in-law of the NGO worker who was killed. 
This courtyard is where the missile hit. A second car parked nearby protected other family members from the blast. The victims included seven children. The water canisters suspected to be explosives are still here. We were standing outside, a bit further down the street, when suddenly there was a terrible sound, the sound of a rocket, then an explosion. We ran into the courtyard. The gate was completely destroyed. Our little children had been blown to pieces. We picked them up. There was blood and body parts everywhere. As well as the seven children, three adults were killed. I put the ten bodies in the coffins with my own hands. The children were totally charred. It was only after we'd buried them and come home that it really sank in what had happened. Three weeks later, after the New York Times investigated the attack and published its findings, the US military admitted it had made a mistake and killed innocent people. We now assess that it is unlikely that the vehicle and those who died were associated with ISIS-K or were a direct threat to US forces. I offer my profound condolences to the family and friends of those who were killed. Afghanistan has long been the main target of U.S. drones. And Germany plays a key role in the U.S. drone war. Rammstein in Rhineland-Palatinate, the largest U.S. military base outside the United States and central to U.S. drone operations worldwide. Rammstein is home to a control center where live images from drones around the world are analyzed and cross-referenced with intelligence. In other words, this is where much of the groundwork for targeted killings is done. The US can kill people whenever and wherever it decides to without due process. And that is, at the very least, controversial in terms of Germany's interpretation of international law. For years, Germany accepted U.S. assurances that the activities in Rammstein do not violate its laws. The U.S. has reiterated that it respects German law in its use of the Rammstein base. But what does the U.S. actually mean by respect German law? In the wake of 9-11, the US declared a war on terror and passed a law approving use of all necessary and appropriate force against suspected terrorists. In other words, drones. Their advantages, supposedly, include precision strikes and reduced collateral damage. With weapons like the Predator drone in our arsenal, our troops can conduct precision strikes on terrorists in hard-to-reach areas while sparing innocent life. With our extraordinary technology, we're conducting the most precise air campaign in history. At my direction, the United States military successfully executed a flawless precision strike. So only terrorists are killed, and there's no risk to U.S. soldiers. Drone strikes are controlled from here in Nevada, not far from Las Vegas. We would have liked to shoot inside the base and talk to the US military. We spent months trying to get an interview, getting nowhere. But we'd still like to take a look at the Creech Air Force Base. This is where the drone pilots work, thousands of miles away from their targets. So what do the people who live close by know about the base? Don't people, like, is it, isn't it a topic? <laughs> no. No, amazingly, nobody talks about anything that goes on over there. That's why I don't know anything. 
We try talking to people in a local bar. We're not filming, but after 10 minutes, a former soldier threatens us with violence if we don't leave. In its promotional videos, the military makes drone warfare look like a video game controlled by a joystick. We want to see what drone warfare means in the places where the missiles strike. Wardak province, Afghanistan. US drone strikes were commonplace here for over 20 years. The population lived in constant fear, never knowing when and where missiles might strike. According to the UN, over 2,000 civilians died in Afghanistan from airstrikes, including drones, in the last five years of the war alone. 40% of civilian casualties were children. Did a drone ever hit when you were playing cricket? Yes. And from where? From there. First, there was a buzzing sound. Then the missile dropped. And then it exploded on the ground, and boom! When they came, we would hide so we wouldn't get bombed. They circled overhead and then they struck. Taliban or not, everybody got hit. Then they flew off again. Proponents of drone strikes argue that collateral damage is a price that has to be paid in the war on terror. Last year, the U.S. succeeded in killing al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahri with a drone. According to the Pentagon, dozens of Taliban and al-Qaeda militants have been taken out by drone strikes. But the fact remains that after 20 years of the U.S. war, the Taliban are once again in power. This former U.S. base is now a Taliban police headquarters. The police chief is a former militant. He claims that drone strikes drive people to extremism. More and more innocent people were dying, and many people were losing their families. And that's when we saw the number of militants increasing. It's a theory. Even the CIA came to the conclusion in an internal study conducted several years ago that drones might have military advantages but could also give rise to new enemies of the US. US drones targeted the Taliban, but in every village here, people tell us about strikes that claimed the lives of innocent people. The US military does not release data on civilian casualties in Afghanistan. But leaked Pentagon papers showed that in one five-month period in 2013, 90% of people killed in U.S. drone killings were not the intended targets. The U.S. military also uses a flawed methodology that counts all military-aged males in a strike zone as combatants, in other words, boys over 15. These three boys were killed by a U.S. drone, one man tells us. He is their older brother. According to the Americans, they were always precision strikes. If they bombed a wedding party, they said they were hitting Taliban. If we said that wasn't true, it didn't do any good. We ordinary people couldn't do anything. Nobody believed us. Most drone strikes are not investigated. The claim that they are precision killings can't be backed up. Research suggests the claim is inaccurate. The idea that a remote-controlled war is a clean war applies only to one side. And then for the time of flight, we meet Brandon Bryant outside the base in Nevada. He used to work for the drone program as a sensor operator of unmanned drones. His job was to mark the drone's target with a laser. Brian 
Bryant says he was involved in more than 1,600 kills. One day in particular stands out in his memory, a drone strike near Kandahar. I remember afterwards being like, was that a kid? Like after missile impact? And the pilot's like, yeah, shut up. And uh, I was like, hey, uh, mission coordinator, MC, can you ask the screener what that was? And uh, mission coordinator asked the screener, and the screener's like, okay, reviewing feed. Uh, we determined that it was a dog. And I was like, there's no way. I was like, there's no way. There's no way a dog can open a door, right? No. I went to my supervisor, and he tried to punish me. He told me to shut the f up, do my job. No one's going to listen to me. Just write it off as a dog. The US Air Force fails to respond to our inquiries. But there is evidence to show that the US military regularly covers up the civilian death toll of drone strikes. In December 2021, the New York Times reported on hidden Pentagon records that revealed that the military has been responsible for thousands of civilian deaths with scant accountability. Whistleblower Brandon Bryant left the army more than a decade ago. He testified in the Bundestag, the German parliament, and received an award in Germany for civil courage. He also spoke about the role played by the Ramstein Air Base in the US drone war. Every day, every time that we launched an aircraft or handed it back, we would call Ramstein Air Force Base up to check the signal multiple times a day. It wouldn't even be once, it's every mission. Every single mission. The Ramstein Air Base is a key control center for the drone war. Does this make Germany complicit in civilian deaths? Three people from Yemen thought so. They filed a lawsuit against the German government because a US drone strike killed their relatives, all civilians. The higher administrative court in Münster ruled that the German government must take action to ensure the US respects international law in using the Ramstein Air Base and monitor US drone activities closely. But the next authority, the Federal Administrative Court, ruled that the German government only needed to ask the US whether it's complying with international law at Ramstein. The court argued, among other things, that no actual decisions are made in Germany. The base merely provides technical assistance. But is it true that no decisions are made there? The United States Africa Command, AFRICOM, is located in Stuttgart. In an interview with German radio, an AFRICOM spokesperson openly stated that decisions on drone strikes in Africa are made in the Stuttgart headquarters. So the, the decision is taken here in Germany? For particular strikes, it is from the AFRICOM command commander's um, purview. What are these strikes that AFRICOM is conducting from Germany? In Somalia, with the consent of the government, the US is fighting the militant group Al-Shabaab. The offshoot of Al-Qaeda controls parts of the country and repeatedly carries out terrorist attacks. This rundown district in Mogadishu is now the home of Khadija Gedo and her granddaughter Fatuma. They fled here from the east of the country. On the evening of February the 2nd, 2020, they were at home with their family. That day we had been to school. Later on in the evening we were having dinner when the missile hit. All I knew was that my sister had been killed. It destroyed my eye and also my leg. It shattered. I lost a lot of blood. One of the girls was blown to pieces. She was killed by a U.S. drone. Khadija Mohamed Gedal lost her eyesight, and her granddaughter, Fatuma, was hospitalized with severe injuries. After the attack, AFRICOM in Stuttgart reported that an Al-Shabaab terrorist had been killed.
The victim was not a terrorist, but a teenager, Nerto Kuso Omar Abuka. Her uncle works as a journalist. When he first heard the report that the U.S. had killed a terrorist in Jilib, he had no idea his own family had been targeted in the strike. I learned that the report we had from AFRICOM uh, was totally baseless uh, propaganda. The incident was that uh, four of my relatives for my, my, were, uh, were targeted. If it weren't for his campaign for the truth, the real victim would never have been named. Almost half a year later, under pressure from human rights organizations, the US military admitted it had killed a civilian. AFRICOM is unwilling to talk to us, but in 2021, Vice World News interviewed Major General Dagvin Anderson, the commander of Special Operations Command Africa at the time. Anytime there is uh, civilian casualties due to conflict, it's heartbreaking and it's very frustrating. It's frustrating as a, a commander and as a father. When we do these strikes, there's a very deliberate intelligence process to confirm the target. And what I can say to that is we can't claim perfection, but we, we do hold ourselves accountable. And we do that uh, very deliberately. Although the US military acknowledged the mistake, Khadija and Fatuma have received no apology and no compensation to date. The US admits that five civilians have been killed in drone strikes in Somalia in the past 15 years. According to local media, hundreds have. In the past, the Green Party sharply criticized Germany's involvement in the US drone war. What kind of a friendship is it if this cooperation is not grounded in international law? In 2019, the Green Party put forward a motion to the German parliament. No use of Rammstein Air Base for killings in violation of international law. Member of Parliament Katja Coyle was a signatory. The U.S. has violated international law with targeted killings in Pakistan, Yemen and Somalia. The German government must no longer be content with ignorance. It has a duty to know. And what it does not know, it must investigate. This silence regarding our ally is not helping us or world peace or our American friends. We need to speak openly. Turning a blind eye is only making things worse. Now the Greens are in government and Katia Coyle is Minister of State at the Federal Foreign Office. Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock declined our request for an interview with a two-month window for scheduling reasons. Katya Coyle won't talk to us either about an issue she previously felt strongly about. Her colleague Tobias Lindner has also refused our request for an interview. Annalena Baerbock repeatedly emphasizes that international law and human rights are at the heart of her foreign policy. I don't distinguish between Uyghurs in China. I don't distinguish between Ukrainians or persecuted Russian journalists and human rights defenders, between Yazidis or Kurds. That is the strength of human rights, indivisibility, no matter where you live in the world. So what is the Green Party's position now on Germany's role in the US drone war? We're trying to find out from Green politicians what the current position is on the drone war and Rammstein. Not my area right now. The party leaders won't give us an interview. Hello, Tretin. Mr. Trittin, what's the current position of the Green Party on the US drone war and Rammstein? There was a ruling from the Higher Administrative Court in Münster, which I personally welcomed. Unfortunately, the Federal Administrative Court ruled differently. It ruled that the government doesn't have to do more than ask questions. But does it? Ask the government. No one will talk. Keep asking. Thanks, Mr. Trittin. We sent the government a list of questions. The foreign ministry says there's constant dialogue with the US. 
but the government has no information about exactly which U.S. drone missions are conducted via Ramstein. And the U.S. has repeatedly provided assurances that it abides by German law. It's what government has always said. So have the Greens abandoned their previous stance? Is the party no longer calling for investigations of civilian deaths? A meeting about Afghanistan is taking place at the Foreign Ministry. Ms. Baerbock, you once submitted a motion, no killing via Rammstein in violation of international law. Press afterwards. But afterwards, we're still not allowed to talk to Ms. Baerbock. The Foreign Office refers us to a new member of parliament. Merle Spellerberg. In 2019, the Greens submitted a motion, no use of Rammstein Air Base for killing in violation of international law. What's their position today? We continue to support this demand both as a party and as a parliamentary group, and continue to condemn killings in violation of international law, be it by armed drones or any other weapon. And I also assume that the government will continue to advocate this in bilateral talks. And since we've had a green foreign minister, have questions been asked of the US? The question is not whether we ask questions, but how we deal with the consequences. And that's not my job to assess. What could the consequences be? That will be a long list beyond the scope of the conversation now. It would affect diplomatic relations with the US. We can assume so. Are the Greens jettisoning their principles because they feel powerless towards the US? Or simply to avoid upsetting an ally? Because clearly, in light of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Germany is more aware than it has been for some time that the US can provide military protection. But how credible is Germany's commitment to human rights if it applies different standards to different countries? The US has been waging war on terror for more than 20 years, primarily with drones. Even if President Joe Biden has scaled down the drone war, he still threatens strikes anytime, anywhere. We have what's called over the horizon capabilities, which means we can strike terrorists and targets without American boots on the ground. It's an ongoing war, and one that most people are barely aware of. But Germany, a country committed to upholding human rights, is involved.